Bullshit. That wasn't half bad. Good job, Mr. Brooks. Hey, everyone. Uh, it's me, Grant, the movie and TV guy. How you doing? Welcome to Raise Up Over with Grant. Uh, this is the second review of the night. And the last one. Um, so, uh, also, I mentioned in my last review, where the crawdads sing, I got this coloring book. Well, my next film, I got temporary tats. Good as a bookmark. So, <laughs> welcome uh, yeah, to Raise Up Over with Grant, everybody. We're going to talk about a movie. Uh, movies and TV, that's what we do here. Um, and that movie is Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. Uh, Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank is directed by Rob Minkoff and Mark Coetzeer and is also directed by Chris Bailey. So three directors. The only one I know is Rob Minkoff. He has done um, thing, things as diverse as The Lion King and uh, the Jackie Chan thriller The Forbidden Kingdom. So... Was he ready for this part? Kind of. So, Pause of Fury, The uh, Legend of Hank, um, is also produced and co-written by Mel Brooks. This will become important. And it is a homage uh, to one of Mel Brooks' greatest films, uh, Blazing Saddles, but for children. And it's co-produced by Nickelodeon Movies. So, this is kind of an interesting one. So, um, that's also And actually, technically, Disney just... Or, not Disney, rather. Nickelodeon just distributed it. This movie's been in development hell for a long time. It was... Um, so, what is the film about? Well, uh, Michael Sarah provides the voice of the titular Hank. He is a dog in a cat's world. Um, he's lived, he lives on the mean streets. Um, and he essentially serves the role of, uh, Bart from Blazing Saddles. Um, through, um, the evil scheme of the evil Lord Ikachu. And yes, there is a, a joke related to what his name sounds like. Voiced by, uh, Ricky Gervais. Um, the, the vi small village needs a samurai, so uh, the Shogun, voiced by Mel Brooks, uh, calls upon Ikachu, who um, has no love for the village or the Shogun, um, sends a, a dog who's about to be executed <laughs> um, to go as uh, their new samurai to defend their little village. Turns out it's an ulterior motive, however, on Ikachu's part. He wants to run everyone out of the town so that he and his goons can take over, uh, his fart-loving, uh, bean-loving goons. And eventually, Hank, uh, bonds with a washed-up, um, catnip-drinking, yes, catnip-drinking, um, boozer cat, known as Jimbo, aka the, basically the Gene Wilder equivalent, played by Samuel L. Jackson. And, um, he's not quite cut out to be a samurai, but... If he trains a little harder and makes a lot of jokes that break the fourth wall, could he become one and save the little village from the evil Ikachu? Well, um, let's find out. Uh, as one character points out, uh, the movie's only... It, this is only 85 minutes. Sans credits, so we gotta do something. <laughs> um, so, um, if, in case it hasn't become clear, um, Pause of Fury Legend of Hank is kind of a real pleasant surprise. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I was really exhausted today, and even though I love Mel Brooks and I love Blazing Saddles, I went into Pause of Fury, Legend of Hank, with a lot of skepticism, and a lot of it, like, just like, oh man, this movie's gonna suck, it just, it didn't look that good from the trailers, it's Nickelodeon Productions, which has had, you know, an okay track record, uh, Rango was good, but, like, it just looked like an acquisition, um, and it all just kind of looked too much just typical kids movie bullshit so color me surprised that from the opening credits pretty much to the post credit i didn't just laugh at pause of fury i almost peed myself pause of fury legend hang is one of the funniest films of 2022 i'm not kidding you this is a genuinely good comedy and what and kids film and what i like about this movie is it's actually a real mel brooks movie there really is even though he didn't direct it his spirit is there Every single joke, even the sad montage, is played directly to the camera to point out that it's a sad montage. Every joke lands. It's very funny. Right off the bat, the first thing you see when the movie begins is the production logos, of course. You see, like, Paramount, and then there's Spongebob lighting up the slime going Nickelodeon, and then, like, 17 almost animation studio logos, and you're just like, my god, there's, this is a lot of opening logos. 
And before, right as you're thinking it, the opening credits are in, it says Paramount and Nickelodeon present uh, a per- an association with this guy, this guy, you know, like all the different things. And then finally it says, midway through, it cuts off and says, and a bunch of other dudes that are too long to list here. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I smiled at that. And then from there, it just was, it never stopped making me laugh. It was genuinely funny. There are jokes in here about, literally that joke, um, they're, when it reaches the climax where they said, you know, we need to do this right now. It goes, why? It goes, because the move, this film is only 85 minutes. Sans credits. <laughs> um, there's a great joke involving a smoke signal. Um, little background jokes. There's jokes um, on the ex- the interiors of different places. There's jokes in the background that are very Mel Brooks, very self-aware. I loved Pause of Fury. I was shocked because I went into this going like, maybe it was the benefit of low expectations, but even the animation came off in the movie better than it did in the trailer. It kind of reminded me, it's not necessarily Pixar tier, but it, the thing is is that it had kind of that Nickelodeon quality where nothing looks realistic, but it kind of doesn't have to be because it's all kind of a joke anyway, and it's kind of weird and offbeat, like Nickelodeon does pretty well when it's on. I really dug this flick. Um, if there's one fly of a positive Legend of Hank is that there is kind of, there is a stretch in the middle where the laughs become more like chuckles for a little while. And it takes a little while to build up like the gut busters, but then by the climax especially. It's just, it's like heavy artillery jokes. Um, right, coming right at you like a, like a machine gun. I love this film. I, I, I would watch this movie again. Just to see... The jokes I missed. There's has to be a few of them. I really love Paws of Fury. I was shocked. This movie was genuinely funny. I think it shows that you can put you can light lighten up Mel Brooks's humor and audience and give it that Nickelodeon coating, but not lose that kind of you know Gonzo wacky spirit. I love this film, and uh, I almost want to give this movie five stars. Quite frankly, I'm not kidding. Also, AV Club gave us an F and called it reprehensible. Come on, AV Club. Come on. Even, even not liking it, fine. It's not an F movie. This movie's really good. Um, yeah, but I'm not going to go all the way. I'm going to go pretty far, though. I'm going to give Applause for the Legend of Hank, though, surprisingly. Four and a half out of five stars. I really love this movie. This is a great family film. This is one of those movies like Shrek where there's almost... It's almost funnier for the adults in the audience. That's what I liked about it. It's very Mel Brooksy. Um, yeah, it's great. Surprisingly. Uh, go see... Yeah, I never thought I'd say this in a billion years, but go see Pause of Fury, Legend of Hank, shockingly. Um, okay, now let's do segments. Now first, this is another thing I want to give a positive review to. And that is, um, to make a long story short, um, the short we did, we got a short in front of this. Uh, because the actual movie is, actually is 37 minutes if you include credits. The running time on AMC.com, however, is an, uh, is an hour 43. Why? Because there's a, a short in front of it, and it's it's based on a Nickelodeon show. I've never seen it. I my best friend in the world is an animation nut. Told me what it was. It's called Big Nate. Um, the short was called How to Make Ice Cream. This was just I don't know what Big Nate is, but I want to watch it now because <laughs> it was that funny. Um, it was like it was these kids, these kind of goofy kids. They look real cartoony. And they're almost a little remind me a little bit of like the Hey Arnold. If there's like a Hey Arnold and Jimmy Neutron had a baby. And they're these kids, and they're trying to teach us how to make ice cream, and then their pet hamster gets into the ice cream, and says, my mom, you know, and uh, mom says that he acts weird on ice cream, and then it goes into a fantasy sequence where the hamster is like a giant who has a deep voice, but is still like cute, and I was on the floor, it was like five minutes, and I was laughing the entire time, and just, I loved it. I thought it was a really, one of the funniest short subjects before a kid's film I've seen in a long long time really good payoff at the end too uh so yeah definitely don't arrive late to Pops of fury get there in time to see the little big date short uh because that was a lot of no jeez come on hiccups that was a lot of fun <laughs> um all right that being said however i'd give that honestly i'd give that short five stars that was a riot uh <laughs> all right trailer trash we actually do not have a lot to talk about here we've talked about all these uh P- puts and boots the last wish looks good um, Avatar The Way of Water. I'm so sick of this trailer. Sorry, it looks good though. Strange World looks good. Kind of getting sick of that trailer too. Lyle, Lyle, Crocodile. We talked about once before. It looks pretty cute. DC League of Super Pets, which we were going to on the 28th of July. Looks good. Um, that's it. Oh, and was there shawarma? Yes. Uh, there are little clips and little animations during the credits 
And then there's a really funny uh, scene after the credits. There's a really funny um, uh, fourth wall joke after the credits. Uh, you don't want to miss that one. It's genuinely really funny. Um, after all the credits. So, uh, all right. We'll be back tomorrow for Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris and then Persuasion and the Sea Beast later this weekend. Uh, that'll all be next time and until next time. I'm Grant, the movie and TV guy. I see it all. I'm happy to share it with you. Uh, I love you all. appreciate you all. Uh, I love how class is missed. I love a few thousand. Be kind to one another. If you like this video, give it a like if you want to. Give it a subscribe if you want to. Give it the bell. I don't know what it does. That's supposed to do or so I've been told. If you want to find me elsewhere, if you listen to other fun stuff, you can check me out on letterbox.com at Raising Popcorn with Grant or my podcast, Raising Popcorn with Grant, the podcast on Spotify and Anchor. Some of you already have, but even if you haven't, take care of yourself, take care of your mental health. It's incredibly important. Now I want to know down below. What did you think of Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank? Did you like the movie? Did you hate the movie? Think my opinion's good? Think I'm full of shit? Comment below and let me know. And until we meet again, we are all raised on popcorn. Make mine with extra butter. I'll see you guys next time. Seriously, though, go see Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. It's surprisingly kind of great. <laughs>